Congressman, just a quick uh, heads up. We had somebody call in repeating a uh, meme from the Daily Caller today that every candidate Ocasio-Cortez endorsed lost their primaries. Um, and uh, Carl Higby also promoting this. is apparently a Republican meme. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez just tweeted, mm -hmm. GOP can't handle the truth, so they make up their own. It's all right. Denial is the first stage of acceptance. The stars Rashida Tlaib, Tlaib and James Thompson, Kansas, won their races last night. She endorsed both of them. We're getting two new rebellious women in Congress, whether they like it or not. Your thoughts? Yeah, exactly. In fact, James Thompson was the one I was thinking of. I didn't know about the other one that I know that she campaigned for. Mm -hmm. uh, my good friend John Nichols is a big fan of his uh, race and told me quite a bit about him as well. So, uh, you know, they're using this as an attack. And the other thing, you know, a friend of mine uh, was telling me a couple days ago they were watching Fox News, and they uh, got into the whole, you know, um, they showed a clip from Cynthia Nixon talking about socialism. And basically they're claiming that all Democrats are socialists now. They're trying to go and, again, make their own narrative about what's going on. And then they're going to do things like that, uh, misrepresent the actual reality uh, of, of what that record is. Uh, you know, they're going to try everything. They're going to go after Nancy Pelosi. They always do. Uh, but at the end of the day, people are way, way smarter than Republicans think they are. And they know who wrote a tax bill that's not going to benefit them. And they know who's uh, involved with all the corruption in Washington. And they know who's trying to take away their health insurance. So um, people are way, way smarter than Republican operatives. Amen. Mike in Central Florida, you're on the air with Congressman Pocan. Uh, yes. Um, I was wondering if uh, Congressman Pocan would like to come down to Florida and uh, run for governor or Senate or anything like that, because he seems like the last... Uh, honest uh, congressman up there um, and I really enjoyed his show uh, on Moyers and Company about the United States of Alec that really really changed my views and uh, made me divest myself from conservatism and republicanism uh, as a whole and so I'm wholeheartedly like liberal and definitely anti-conservative at this point especially after watching the Bill Moyers show so thank you Mike. I just want Yes, sir. Yeah, Mike, thank you. That's uh, very kind of you. And, and, you know, when I was a state legislator, Tom, as you know, I, uh, I joined ALEC, the American Legislative Exchange Council, a conservative um, dating service between corporations and Republican uh, or conservative legislators uh, to match them up and, and create legislation that was good for the, the corporate interest. And uh, I joined it purposely to get the passwords to give to all the progressive groups so we could find out all their model legislation and uh, did a lot of work around that as a state legislator. And, uh, you know, those things, they're so sophisticated. They have so much money in their operations. We have ideas, we have the people, but they seem to have the money and they can put behind ideas like that. But I think we've done a lot to expose it. Actually, Mike, I'm coming down next week to help a couple candidates uh, in Florida, um, including uh, Dave Richardson, who's running down in the Ileana Ross Layton seat uh, in a primary, because you guys have a late primary in Orlando to help Darren Soto. So I'll be down uh, for a couple days uh, next week. But, uh, again, appreciate your comments, and I, I'm really glad that the ALEC uh, issue helped make people realize how sophisticated their operation is to try to make people vote against their, their best interests. That is spectacular. Mark in Akron, Ohio, you're on the air with Congressman Mark Pocan. Yes, Tom, Mark, good to talk to you. Yeah, hi, Mark. Yep, I'm a little off topic, but one thing I keep hearing is Mueller investigation. We're going to impeach Trump. What happens if we do impeach Trump, even get him out of office? Doesn't that put Mike Pence in the White House? And is that a better option at this point? Trump is awfully fractured and not terribly effective and a little polarizing. Pence might be actually worse for the country than Trump. Thoughts, Congressman? Yeah, Mark, you know, this is one of these uh, where we don't have a great choice, but when you've got someone as corrupt as Donald Trump, uh, you have to, if the investigation gets to the point, to find out that he's done uh, things that are illegal, you have to deal with those directly. And Mike Pence uh, may not be uh, good on many issues, especially uh, around civil rights for LGBT community and for labor uh, and uh, a lot of other issues. That's the choice we have, right? Uh, elections have consequences. Two years ago, um, our base did not come out as aggressively for, you know, in some cases, uh, good reasons, uh, not a campaign that inspired uh, at all levels like we would have liked it to. But the reality is uh, that's the option. Let's hope that, uh, you know, as the investigation happens, if Mike Pence was also knowledgeable about things, that that might affect him as well. But 
bottom line is if someone broke the law, uh, we have to get rid of that person, and uh, that may just be the choice that we have. Cat in Boston, Massachusetts. Hey, Cat, you're on, on the air with Congressman Mark Pocan. Hi, and thanks for taking my call. Love your show. Thank you. Congressman, can you tell me, um, do we have the Sinclair Tribune um, decision that just failed in the FCC, but I'm not sure I understand why and whether it's coming back around and where the Democrats are on this, because it seems like the link between Sinclair on the media side and Kavanaugh to the Supreme Court and the Koch brothers side between undoing the fourth estate and undoing the Constitution, there's a huge overlap. So is that on the radar for the progressive Democrats? Yes, Kat. So first of all, I mean, you know, one, we've talked about the attacks that we just see from the president on the media. But second, um, you know, we're also watching the consolidations that are happening. And you know, one of the central planks of the Democrats, going back to even last year, uh, has been going after antitrust, which I'll be honest, um, shocked the heck out of me uh, that uh, we could get Democratic leadership on that place because, uh, you know, this stuff goes all the way back to, quite honestly, Bill Clinton. Um, we're down to so few players in various industries uh, that uh, it has been a real fight because it's incredibly anti-consumer to have uh, that kind of consolidation, whether it be airlines, media, um, real estate. There's a number of industries we're starting to see this big banks and other consolidation. But uh, it was part of the plank of the better deal. I think the better deal is morphed to a, a more coherent message now. But um, this has been at the central part of what we've talked about with that corruption uh, really is. So uh, I think there's some good movement where the Democrats are on this, but uh, we all need to look at groups like Roosevelt Institute, and I shouldn't start naming groups, I'm going to get in trouble, Tom, but a lot of groups are doing work around this, and uh, look at these media mergers and uh, make sure that we're keeping on top of uh, these issues, because it, it does have a big impact on us as consumers, but also when it comes to media, on what information will get out. Yeah. Uh, Maria, in Evanston, Illinois, here on the air with Congressman Pocan. Hi, um, thank you so much, um, uh, Tom and Congress, uh, Congressman. I really appreciate um, all the work you do for us. Thank you. Um, so my um, question is and statement is uh, languaging. How I feel the Democrats need to language better uh, our messages, and one of them is people are so afraid of the word socialist and they don't really understand it. So I feel like renaming the FDR um, Democrats of what he stood for and how he helped our country move forward through the Depression. <clears throat> and also um, changing not midterm elections but congressional elections, people have to understand Congress, the House is elected every two years and how important that is to keep up uh, what we need to move forward. So call them presidential uh, elections and, and congressional elections as opposed yes. to presidential and midterms. Mid yeah. Yeah. Okay. People don't get it. Yeah, Mar yeah, Maria, the second one I, I especially agree with. I, uh, I, I like that idea because, you know, midterm does sound a little different, and everyone has different primary dates across the country, and that can get confusing. So uh, I, I take that uh, as a good point. Uh, on the other one, I, the term I use, honestly, I think that's most important is progressive. You know, I, and I'll admit Wisconsin has a – progressive tradition going back to fighting Bob LaFollette, and that's where my heart has always been in following that. But people are for progress, and I think if we can just, uh, you know, keep that as the term we all use, I think we, you know, are in a good place uh, rather than each of us coming up with our own terms. But you're right, the Republicans do such a much better job of that. Congressman, we just have about a minute and a half before you need to, you need to run, so I'm, I'm curious what your thoughts are for us all. And the, the uh, you know, this week and what we should be looking forward to and, and doing and thinking about until we hear from you next. Sure. Well, the, the House is out of session. So, um, you know, one, watch the groups out there like uh, Move On, DFA, Indivisible, and others that are working on things in case the president does something around the investigations that's bad around Rosenstein or Mueller. Uh, be ready. Those groups are working very, very hard, public citizen, others on that. Uh, but also, next week's another wave of elections. You've got Wisconsin on the 14th, Minnesota. My good friend Keith er uh, Ellison is up uh, for the attorney general, and there are going to be a number of congressional races and a governor's race there. Uh, a lot of elections still coming up. Let's just see if we can keep this momentum. And uh, if so, I, I think we've got some really great potential to turn things around in November. There's a, a lot of work to do and a lot of potential out there. Congressman Mark Pocan, thanks so much for being with us today.
Thank you, Tom. Appreciate it as always. It is always a pleasure. Congressman Mark Pocan, you can uh, tweet him at pocan.house, excuse me, at rep uh, Mark Pocan, and you can uh, find his website at pocan.house.gov.